This is Notes for Engineers, and I'm Alistair Cook. In this episode, we're going to look at thin provisioned virtual machine hard drives, and we're going to see how they grow. We'll look at what thick provisioning is, then we'll have a look at how thin provisioning is different. We'll look at how thin provisioned disk files grow over time, and how they shrink. We'll look at the benefits of using thin provisioned disks, and then we'll look at the risks of thin provisioned disks as well. The VMDK file that I'm talking about here is the hard drive for the virtual machine. So what the virtual machine sees as its hard disk, we store it inside a VMDK file sitting on a VMFS data store or an NFS data store. The disk that the VM sees is made up of two pieces. There is a file called the VMDK file, so in the case of the first disk attached to a VM called myVM, it's myVM.VMDK, and this is metadata. It's a tiny text file containing information about where to find the actual data. And you can see an example here that describes a, a disk. This file itself will be a few hundred bytes in size, uh, maybe three, four hundred bytes. It's just metadata and it points to a flat file. You can see about the middle of it, the this, this section where it says extent description and says that there's this flat file. The flat file is the big binary data file. This is where the actual hard drive data of the virtual machine is stored flat file is however big the hard drive is on the virtual machine. A thick provision VMDK file, the VMDK file itself is tiny. Now we typically talk about a VMDK file even though it is these two files, the VMDK and the flat file. We'll talk about it as if it's one file and in the data store browser the vSphere client will hide the, the fact that there are actually two files there. So the actual VMDK file is tiny, but we get the flat VMDK file. This is the one that is the binary data that is the hard drive. With a thick provisioned disk, this flat file is created full size when it's first created. So if I created a 40 gigabyte hard drive for my virtual machine, the flat file is 40 gigabytes on the day it's created. The flat file doesn't get bigger, doesn't get smaller, never changes its size, never fills up a data store. You're not allowed to create a VMDK file that is flat and is larger than the free space on the data store, and so the data store won't run out of free space because of a thick provisioned VMDK file. Now this is not talking about snapshots. As we saw in the snapshot discussion, those are thin provisioned. A thick provisioned VMDK file itself will never fill a data store. You must, of course, then have that capacity on day one. On the day that you create the VMDK file, you must have enough space on your data store to hold that VMDK file. As a consequence of needing all of that size on the first day, we can't overcommit on the data store. So if I have a two terabyte data store, I can't store more than two terabytes worth of virtual machine thick provision disk files on it. We'll see this is quite different for thin provisioned. One of the good things is we can still make that VMDK file larger over time. So although we may create it 40 gigabytes today, we can increase it to an 80 gigabyte disk tomorrow when we find we need additional capacity to take patches and, and updates into our machine or as new data arrives at the machine. Of course, when you make them larger, they're still thick provisioned. If I change a VMDK file from 40 gigabytes to 80 gigabytes thick provisioned, I have to have an additional 40 gigabytes of free space on the data store to grow into. Thin provisioning is a little different. Thin provisioning, the VMDK file is still tiny, it's still just a little metadata file. But the flat file also starts out tiny. Flat file starts out almost zero in size, but grows every time new blocks are written to it. Uh, the VMDK file, the flat file, will hold any data block that has been written to by the virtual machine and will grow larger as more blocks are written to. On a VMFS data store, the flat file grows in VMFS block sizes, which now is just one megabyte. We only need enough space on the data store for the blocks that have been written to. We don't need to have enough free space on the data store right now for every block in the VMDK file to be written to. So if I create a 100 gigabyte thin provision VMDK file, but the virtual machine only writes to 20 gigabytes worth of blocks, I only need space for those 20 gigabytes of blocks. I don't need the whole 100 gigabytes to be available now. This allows us to overcommit. This means that I could store on a two terabyte data store, I could actually have eight or 10 terabytes worth of VMDK files. It's just that their right now size couldn't exceed the two terabytes on the data store. Their allocated size and the size that's visible inside the guest OS could vastly exceed the size of my data store. A consequence of overcommit is that we can completely fill a data store and that's one of the two things that causes data stores to run out of free space is thin provision VMDK files. The other of course is snapshots. If I've overcommitted on the VMDK file then I can absolutely fill that data store with the VMDK files as they get data written to them by the virtual machines. 
Thin provision discs can also be grown over time, so you can start out with a relatively small size, and as the requirements to store more data inside the virtual machine grows, we can increase the size of the VMDK files. This is quite a good thing because it means you can be conservative in your overcommit, but still be fairly flexible. So instead of creating very large thin provision VMDK files and having no idea what data will turn up in them, you can create relatively small thin provision VMDK files. Watch for free space and increase the size of the VMDK files you need to. This is really good for flexibility. So how do thin provision VMDK files grow? Essentially, any block that the virtual machine writes to has to be stored inside the VMDK file. So as the VM writes more and more data into the VMDK file, the VMDK will get larger. And this is the flat file, the actual VMDK file, that metadata file stays tiny, but the flat file will grow. It will grow in VMFS blocks, um, one block at a time, as data arrives. Since VMFS 5 uses one megabyte block size, this means that the flat file will grow one megabyte in size at a time, and it will grow to contain all of the disk blocks that have been written to by the virtual machine. If you overwrite the same blocks repeatedly, then the VMDK file won't grow. But as new data is written in, then the VMDK file will grow. This is particularly important since the guest operating system tends not to reuse blocks that it's already written to. Even if you delete a file out, the blocks that contain that file data will still be stored in the VMDK. If you copy additional files in, they won't overwrite blocks that contain data. This is because the guest operating system wants you to be able to undelete to recover those files that you've deleted, and it can't do that if it overwrites them. But a consequence of this is that the size of the VMDK file can be significantly more than the amount of data currently in the guest OS file system because all of the blocks that have been written to are stored. And so the VMDK file can grow quite large over time from a small icon. You can get a mighty tree. Here's the bad news. Thin provision disks don't shrink, mostly. Essentially, you don't get back all of the space that's now wasted inside a thin provision disk. If you've copied in lots of data and then deleted that data out of the guest OS, getting that data back is really hard. Sometimes we can do this with a storage vMotion, migrate from one data store to another, but only if all of the blocks that used to contain data have been zeroed. And when the guest OS deletes files, it doesn't zero them. We have to use something like sdelete from sysinternals to zero all those blocks before they can be reclaimed out of the VMDK file. It's so actually a really painful process to go through, and so very few people do. You really need to think of thin provision disks as something that gets larger but never gets smaller. This can have some significant impacts. Benefits. Thin provision disks are really easy. You don't need to think too carefully about the size of data that's going to turn up in a virtual machine. You can simply create a fairly large VMDK file and thin provision it and watch the free space let things grow over time. So you don't need to plan the size. You pick a maximum size and remember that we can grow later and so you don't have to create a maximum size that's going to work for maybe five years worth of life. Maybe just think about a maximum size for six to 12 months worth of growth and keep monitoring. You absolutely can overcommit the data store space that you have bought today, which means you can then defer buying additional space until later. You can save money and buy storage capacity as your requirements grow. It's very important that you monitor the free space on your data stores as you're growing these VMDK files as the thin provision disks expand. So running out of data store space is a bad thing. Using thin provisioning is a great way to defer purchasing and to save yourself some money. However, Whenever we overcommit on a resource, we're taking a risk. We're taking a risk that there can be an increase in demand, in this case, that more data can turn up on virtual machines, and that the data store can get filled because these virtual machines are getting larger and larger. And of course, when the data store is full, every virtual machine that asks for more space from the data store will stop. Any VM that's thin provisioned and asking for more space on a full data store will stop. No pings, nothing. We really don't want to see this. It's going to cause us a big concern. So if you're going to thin provision your disks and overcommit your data stores and the two go together, then you really must monitor very carefully free space on your data stores. Thin provisions disks definitely grow. They start small, but they get larger over time. They almost never get smaller. You have to be careful that these thin provision disks do not fill your data stores because you usually use them to overcommit, and you must monitor free space on the data stores and react when you have to. Use thin provision disks with care. They can save you a lot of money, but always, always look after the workload inside your virtual machines. 
This is Notes for Engineers. We've been looking at thin provision disks and how they grow. You can find more Notes for Engineers video at notesforengineers.com and to be notified when new ones come out, just follow N4Engineers on Twitter. I'm Alistair Cook. It's been uh, great talking with you and we'll talk again.